Now we get to the eternal gospel. We only have five minutes. Look at verses 6 and 7. So these healthy believers are in heaven, but now I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel. You know, one of my times reading through the Bible, I told you I read the Bible through once a month for several years until I caught up and got way ahead of my age. Every time I look for something, you know what I look for once? Every time the gospel's talked about. You know, everybody debates it, and you have all kinds of books and camps and groups, but most people don't know what the Bible says. What the Bible says is, rarely does the Bible present the gospel the same way twice. But this one's interesting. This is the everlasting gospel. God sent us the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to everyone, every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. This is important. And this angel who's come directly from the presence of God is giving the ultimate declaration of the gospel of the God of the universe, and he says this, fear God, give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come, worship him. Remember I talked to you in chapter 11 about how important worship is, how it quickens and, you know, and, and, and transforms us. Worship him. Look at this. Who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Creationism does matter. Wow. I mean, it's not just Ken Ham and his ark and all. God says, for those people to be saved, they had to believe that he is the one he declared he was. The creator, who is the only one that can be your redeemer, or else you'll face him as judge. Wow. God adds a third source. The 144,000 are out there, and they finished. The two witnesses were out there, and they were martyred. Now he sends the gospel angel. And the message is turned to the true and living God. Bow to him, obey him, worship him. God proclaims the entire world through an angel flying overhead that can be heard his eternal gospel. And by the way, it's the very same gospel. In the New Testament, it's called the gospel of God. It's called the gospel of grace. It's called the gospel of Christ. It's called the gospel of peace. It's called the glorious gospel. It's called the gospel of the kingdom. Anyone even here at the crescendo of the tribulation who will turn to God will be gloriously saved. Wow. I mean, you know what that is? It's the gospel angel. And you know, I don't think we're going to turn the world around because you see in the future they're not turned around. We're not going to save the planet because you see it being destroyed before your eyes. The ecology isn't going to get better and better and better. But I still have a great hope going through life because I know those who I lead to Christ will not be marked by the Antichrist because they will already be sealed by the Holy Spirit of God and they will have a future and a hope. That's why we can have hope in a world of doom. We don't simply hide out sitting on a mountaintop waiting for the end of the world. We rescue as many people as we can by telling them about Jesus, which reminds me, Bonnie and I started out married life. I told you this, we'd eat every day. I worked at, at uh, Grace Community Church. We'd eat every day at the pantry. After our second week, the waiter we had every day wearing this black hat who had nostrils this big that were red. You know what that means? He snorted Coke. When someone snorts Coke, it capillates, you know, your blood vessels, your nose swells up, turns red, it runs. It's, it's hard to snort cocaine. But that guy, we were sitting there, Bonnie and I, every morning, we'd eat our breakfast, we'd read our Bible, back and forth between chews. And finally, our waiter came over, Mr you know, big nostril, and he came like this, and he got our attention by looking it up. He gave us an even better view of his nose. And he said to us, I'll never forget this, hey man, what are you two on? He was asking what drug we were on. He said, I've been serving you for two weeks. You're high every morning. He said, I snort cocaine. I said, I can tell you snort cocaine. He said, it only lasts a little while. I got to get more money and get more. He said, what are you two on? He said, it doesn't seem to wear out. Do you know what he was asking us to do? Share the gospel. See, that's the gospel of hope that Jesus offers. Compassion in the midst of judgment. The most noted emotion of Christ was compassion. And the way we get it is to ask Christ for it and to put it on.